Hi, how you guys doing? I hope that you guys are having a great Monday morning, afternoon, or evening, depending on wherever you are located in the world. I want to talk some more about true black unity and empowerment and independence. As you know, I'm a big proponent of black unity, African unity to be more specific, because the black population, as it has been called in the past few decades on the American continent, does not only include people who were born on American soil, but it also includes people in the islands, people um, on the continent of Africa, people that have been dispersed all over this world with melanin in their skin. I'm calling forth every last person of African descent to come forth and truly unite with one another. It's time for us to unite. No more division. No more Africans don't like African Americans or African Americans don't like Africans or um, the people from in the Caribbean or thus and so, thus and so. Can we stop with that already? It's it's really not the time for that anymore. We Guys, it's time out for that foolery. We have to unite. We have to start investing in one another. We have to, have to start loving Loving one another, we have to start trusting one another, and we have to again invest in one another. You know, whatever popularity or so called wealth that certain particular African American individuals have does not represent the collective whole of the collective wealth of people of African descent. The collective wealth is not there, but if we were to take all of our wealth, all of our investments, all of our money, the money that we spend to pay the white man government, the white man taxes, to make sure that the white man's home is okay and his children go to the best schools and they drive the finest car and live in the best neighborhoods while we live in poor housing, substandard housing, while our children are not educated in the not only not the most well-equipped school systems in the country, but now they don't even want our children or their children or anybody's children to know the full truth about what really happened in history, in American history. They don't want the world to know what really happened on American soil as it pertains to our forefathers. So our children are getting dissected, ch chopped and skewered education uh, programming, I call it, to make them rich and to ensure that they keep the generational wealth in their families while we stay perpetually at the bottom of the economic totem pole. It's time out for that. Do you not know how many African-owned businesses there are on the continent? When I went to Lagos in 2020, I'm going to forever talk about that. All the businesses that I saw were black-owned. Okay, I didn't see no Arabians owning anything. I didn't see any Indians owning anything. Now, I know there's some Chinese people that, that's built certain things and infrastructures and loaned some money to the African continent, but every business owner I saw was African. And now I'm, I'm on the continent again. I'm not in Lagos. I, I'm in the capital, and I still see mostly of, if not all African owned businesses and guess where they take their money and they put it in their African banks huh they put it in their African banks Chinese don't own those banks the Russians don't own those banks a white man and a European don't own those banks it's African owned Hmm? there are even certain cryptocurrencies that have been set up here on the continent I don't know of any other Africans, people of African descent that have set up cryptocurrency anywhere else in the world, including the United States. So what does that tell you? Hmm? If you really are that interested in building up black wealth and in, you so interested in black empowerment, you really have to start reconsidering where you are spending most of your money, where you invest in most of your coin. Your dollar dollar bills, as long as they're still good. You have to you have to reconsider 
where you're living. Every, every person that's living in America, they're paying a white man bank to live there. They're paying a mortgage. And most of the mortgages are owned by white, or predominantly white banks. They got some that are black owned banks, but that, that it's only a, a, only a few in the whole continental United States. Most of the banks are predominantly white owned. The government, mostly white run. Hmm? Most of the businesses are not owned by African Americans. And yeah, they do have, you know, they tell the banks, the banks say, hey, no, we can't loan you any money. Or they, if you do get any money for businesses, whether it's business recovery during national disasters or mm -hmm, or whatever, they're going to come back and say, no, what did you do with the money? They don't do that to any other community. Think about it. All those people that got in trouble with the PPP loans, when they give out those loans to the Chinese people, they, didn't, they don't go back and ask, hey, what did you do with the money? Not as much as they do when they're giving out the money to our people. Huh? If you're really serious about attaining black wealth and black empowerment and making sure that there's gener generational wealth in our families, huh? You really have to start reconsidering where you invest your dollar. And guess what? Every month you pay a mortgage, that's an investment in the white man's bank, in the white man's monetary system. Every time you pay taxes, you are investing in the white man's government. We know you're teaching division. No, I'm not. That's just straight facts. Do your research. Do your homework. If you're going to divest, divest, go ahead and divest fully. Don't talk about, oh, 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 and do the protests and cry on social media about how everything is not equal. But you, every month, you faithfully paying a white man mortgage. Every month, you paying white man taxes. You making sure that the white man can send his children to the best schools. Hmm? But what are you doing to, to ensure that your people are blessed? And have sustenance and wealth to put back into the kingdom of the Most High Yah. No, this is not division. When Joseph was, was was Joseph was in Egypt looking out for his people, that wasn't racism. He was obeying the command of the Most High Yah. He was storing up. He was storing up for the Egyptians, which is us, by the way. And he was storing up for his people. That wasn't racism. That wasn't division. That was just wisdom and a command of the Most High. It's time out for this. Stop letting the enemy divide you and get your mind all discombobulated and thinking that everybody of African descent, everybody with melanin in their skin is not related. We are all one. We are all family. So stop it. I command you to stop it. You are in error and you are letting the enemy divide and conquer us as a people when you refuse to unite with your brothers and sisters all over the world. It's time out. It's time out. All the skills that have been attained in the African American community. All the degrees we have in the African American community, all the teachers, you could come to that continent and teach these people true American history. You could teach them what they think they have to risk life and limb to go to the United States for. You could say, hey, I'm going to teach at a university, huh? For a couple of years. You're not going to do that, though, because it's not lucrative for you. But I challenge you, I challenge you, invest in your people. Invest in your people. Reconsider. I pray that you reconsider. Because you're not empowering black people as a whole by continuously and faithfully funding the white man's government and the white man's systems. You're just not doing it. Okay? You guys be blessed in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. And I love you. I really do.